These four quadcopters are exactly the same, except for one thing. This one has an analog video transmitter. This one has HD zero. This one has walk snail. And this one has DJI. And that means we've got the perfect test conditions to really find out which of these video transmitters is best for very small micro quadcopters where the weight matters almost as much as the actual video link performance. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. Now I wanna spoil the end of the video just a little bit. I know this is bad for my YouTube analytics, but I don't think it's too much of a spoiler to say that Shocker, the heavier quadcopter with the DJI video transmitter on it, flew differently than the lighter quadcopter with the analog video transmitter on it. That's what you're looking at now is the DJI one. And probably you're thinking, Man, this doesn't look too bad. He's doing the flippy flops. He's flying around. Maybe a little bit of shutter or a little bit of prop wash, but what could you expect from something this small? It's fine. And that was my thought too. But then I immediately went and got the analog one, the lightest one, and flew it back to back with the DJI one. And the difference was night and day. And I want to show you this footage because I want you to go into this video knowing that, yeah, it's not just a subtle difference, it's a massive difference. The analog one is light, it's responsive, it goes where you want it to go, you touch the throttle and it jumps, it's smooth, it's so well tuned, I kind of can't believe it. And OMG, also the battery sag on the heavier one versus the longer flight, it's night and day difference. And that's why I wanted to start you by showing these little flippy flop footages so you could see what's coming at the end of the video. The quadcopter we're working with in this video is the Flywoo Firefly 2S Nano Baby. Say that five times fast. And the reason I picked it is, number one, I just heard it was an interesting, good flying quadcopter that was worth a look. And number two, because it is available with all four of the major FPV video systems that are available today. And the weight of these guys is the reason that these are so perfect for this video. Because a true 65 millimeter tiny whoop coming in around 20 grams simply wouldn't be able to carry really any of these video transmitters except for the HD Zero whoop bundle. But something more in this two inch 2S class coming in at a weight of around 35 grams, that's actually capable of carrying all of these video transmitters, but not so heavy like a five inch quadcopter that the weight of the video transmitter just doesn't matter anymore. This is the perfect size class to really highlight the effect of the weight of these video transmitters on the flight performance of the quadcopter. So how much do they actually weigh? I'm gonna zero out the scale with the analog quadcopter on it and then we'll see the weight difference for the others. The DJI one has an additional 11 grams. So it's coming in around 45 grams. The walk snail one comes in at an additional only 8.3 grams compared to analog. And the uh, HD zero one comes in at an additional five grams. The HD zero video transmitter on this quad is the HD zero whoop light bundle. It is not the HD zero tiny whoop video transmitter, which comes with a, I think it's a 14 millimeter camera, but don't quote me on that. The Whoop Light Bundle is specifically designed for very small and light quadcopters, and it comes with a special super lightweight camera, and that means it also has a little bit worse image quality than the larger cameras, so don't take what you're seeing in this video as the best possible reflection of HD Zero's image quality. The DJI quadcopter in this roundup has a naked Cadex Vista on it. And that's a Cadex Vista video transmitter that has had the heat sinks removed. That means that we're gonna get the full maximum output power of the DJI system out of this guy, whereas all the other video transmitters have scaled down their output power to deal with heat, weight, and other problems that come from putting them on these very small quadcopters. The walk snail version of this quad has a walk snail 1S video transmitter on it, as well as a, another camera that I don't recognize. They really pulled out all the stops for Flywoo, I guess. It turns out that this is not the same 1S walk snail video transmitter that you may have bought and that I uh, reviewed previously on my channel. It's a new revision of the walk snail 1S video transmitter that is even smaller and lighter. So if you're wondering why my walk snail quad is lighter than yours, that's 
probably why. It's just a few grams, but it does add up. This probably is going to be available and going to be shipping by the time I release this video, but if you bought one of these Waxnail ones, you may or may not actually get this exact video transmitter. All right, let's take these guys outside and fly them. And of course, we got to start with analog. So, first impressions. Whoa! First impression is this thing's fast. It's got more up tilt than I anticipated it would. It's pretty smooth. Good. It flies pretty good for such a tiny quad. The camera is not the best ever. Range on the video link is decent. Can we go behind the barn? I haven't even got my patch antenna pointed this direction. I kind of do a little bit. I'm just sitting how I'm sitting. That's really neat. That's really solid. 450 milliwatts. Uh... Yeah, see, I'm, I'm kind of facing away from the house. What if I go through here? It's fine. What if I go down this way? Wow, it's fine. Solid. That's a solid 450 milliwatts. So, the quad flies shockingly well, actually. It got, it's got so much get up. For such a little quad, it doesn't, f I know this is a cliche, but it doesn't feel like a micro in terms of its responsiveness, in terms of its, uh, you know, just th cornering, its throttle response, its speed. If we try to fling it, we won't get, that's not, that's honestly not bad flingability for such a small quad. There's one thing that's holding me back from really cutting loose and I'll tell you what it is after we fly another pack honestly even like the prop wash oscillation as we get down there is not bad like on a little quad you would really expect it to just lose its shit when we do a drop in like this but it really doesn't it stays very composed there's a little bit of prop wash oscillation but I mean that's hardly anything to complain about and to be able to get into a big area like the like the field with such a small quad and just kind of open up the throttle and go and not have it feel like it's ridiculously oh there was some prop wash oscillation to not have it feel like it's ridiculously inappropriate oh, for such a big area uh it really says something about this guy this is this is a hoot what I want to do on this pack is get a little tighter so we can really feel some of the proximity stuff when we go to the heavier ones. Just kind of try and rip through here a little bit. with some control. I kinda wanna, oh, yeah. Kinda wanna stay out of the branches. Am I gonna be able to get back up? No. Come on, baby, come on. Yes! Oh, I can't believe I got back up. Oh goodness, oh goodness, oh goodness. <laughs> surprisingly durable. Those props are not falling out. I'm just getting stupid flying through obstacles. Next we're going to go to the HC Zero Quad which is just about 5 grams heavier but of course when your total dry weight is just 35-ish grams then adding 5 grams is a pretty substantial change. Let's see what effect that has on flight. And I know I'm facing the patches away from where I'm flying but it's like literally 50 yards that direction shouldn't really matter. Ooh, these things are so quiet. 
So here I believe we're limited to 200 milliwatts output power instead of 450. Let's go around here like we did. Oh, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be more sketchier. I can already tell. Let me turn my head just a little and aim the patch antennas at it. Uh, oh, that's better. That's better. We didn't have to do that for analog, but we had more than twice as much output power. So, yeah, all right. Maybe I ought to turn turn my butt around after all. <laughs> uh, we're hanging in there. Oh, that's 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 sketchy too. As far as how it flies, I don't know if it's that much different. I think I can feel a little difference in its response to the throttle pumps. Just a little less eager to jump ahead, but if I were to do a blind test, I'm not sure I could I could consistently pick it out. So I might just be imagining it. Still pretty smooth coming down through there. Little shudder there as I try to do a this little spangy move. This fly is real nice though. I have no complaints. Let's do these maneuvers in here. A little prop wash there. Oh, oops, don't cut the grass. Uh, the quads all have the same PID tune. I noticed this when I did setup. Uh, and there's no way that the exact same PID tune is ideal for quads with this much difference in their weight. So I don't really criticize Flywoo for that, for not coming up with a perfect ideal PID tune for every single one of these four variants. But it does mean that we should expect to see a little bit of difference in how they fly. And one of the things we might see as we add weight is worse prop wash handling because you need like higher P and D gains for, to compensate for the additional weight. This is really fun to fly. The only thing that was holding me back when I was flying analog uh, was the camera. That's, I told you I would tell you that, I didn't. Um, it was a camera. It was being able to see the details of where I was going and what I was doing and what obstacles I might be running into. Well, that was real smooth right there. Oh gosh, please don't, please don't! Oh! Okay, okay, I can retrieve that easily. I was about to say, I'm not really having that problem with the HD0 quad, uh, I can see a lot more than with analog. Anybody who says that HD0 doesn't have significantly better image quality than analog is, I just think is crazy. I, still, I think we're gonna see even better image quality on the walk snail video transmitter. I don't know, only one way to find out. Now the walk snail video transmitter goes up to 350 milliwatts, which is more than the 200 milliwatts of the HD0, but not quite as much as the 450 of the analog. Now this video transmitter is only two grams heavier than the HD0, so there's no freaking way I should be able to tell any difference between them. The only difference is gonna be that HD0's video system has consistent frame timing, jitter, and latency, and so it offers a much smoother, more analog-like feel, uh, whereas the walk snail and the DJI video systems the latency changes as the link gets weaker. And you can actually, no you can't see because I'm not recording the screen. Uh, the DVR doesn't record, but there's latency readout at the bottom of the screen. Um, so it's changing from 25 to 35 or 40 milliseconds, uh, depending on how much the signal strength is. Uh, that results in a feeling of like little stutters sometimes while you're flying. It's most significant when you're doing very precise stuff like racing or tight proximity acro. Oof, big prop wash there, that's too bad. This one seems to be handling worse. Like just a little more prop wash, just a little more blah, blah, blah in turns. I wonder if the extra like five grams of the HD zero video transmitter, like what if they did the PID tune for the analog quad, which is the lightest, and then the HD zero video transmitter adds five grams and the PID, PID tune is like, ah, I kind of got this. And then like the extra two grams of the uh, walk snail is enough to kind of put it into, whoa, okay, I can't handle it. I don't know. 
Seems to be doing just a little worse. I'm not sure, I, again, I could pick a difference in a blind test though. Let's do one more pack. In theory, if I were a much better pilot and more consistent, the uh, consistent latency of the HD0 system would give me a real advantage doing tight, racy lines like these definitely aren't. I suspect that for a pilot at my uh, level of practice and skill, it's not really hurting me because I'm not like down to that microsecond level of muscle memory. Well, that's a prop wash here. Oh, it did okay there. These all fly really good. I mean, I'm gonna nitpick them because I have to, but they all fly really good. Now it's time for the big boy, DJI. And as far as range and penetration goes, there's no question that this will destroy all the others because this outputs a full 1200 milliwatts or 700 milliwatts from the factory, but 1200 milliwatts if you unlock it, and I have. Um, uh, but it pays for that with a lot of additional weight. Yeah, I feel like I can notice a difference here in how responsive it is. It's still flying pretty good. But if this was the first one I flew, I don't think I'd be as impressed as I was with the analog. Also, the battery is struggling. We're dropping down to 3.5 volts just on every little throttle punch. Yeah, huh. Big bubbles there. Now we can go anywhere though. Like, we could just literally go anywhere. I could fly all the way out to the ridge if I had, if my battery wouldn't die. Like, I could just fly all the way out to that ridge with the video system and it wouldn't let up. Easily. But, the experience of flying this, like, it's not bad, but like, that, that, whoa, this is really good experience I had when I, uh, flew the uh, analog one at first just isn't there. Can make it work, but it's a it's a bit of a struggle. And it's not nearly as sort of effortless. It feels like I'm flying a heavy small quad. Yeah, lots of prop wash there. So then, which of these four quadcopters is best? I'm pretty sure I can help you find the answer. And as usual, it's going to depend on what your priorities are. It should come as no surprise that the analog quadcopter flew the best. It had the longest flight time and it had the best flight characteristics. And I don't think that's just because Flywoo probably based their tune on the analog one. A smaller, lighter quadcopter will have more power to weight ratio and be able to perform better. This thing was a absolute joy to fly. Really surprising for something this small. Flywoo have done a hell of a good job with this quadcopter. The analog system has the worst video quality out of any of them. There's no question about that. The camera is really a pain sometimes and you can't see where you're going some of the time. Uh, but if a pure flight experience is what you're after, there's no doubt that this is the one to get. And the 450 milliwatt video transmitter had shockingly good range. I didn't put this in the video, but I actually flew it all the way down to the end of my street and then all the way up almost completely to the other end of the street and didn't lose video. It almost matched DJI and Walksnail in like usable video range, although it, it looked like crappy analog the whole time, so right, but I was really impressed with this little guy. 
The AC0 and the Walk Snail Quad have almost the same flight performance as the analog quad. Just not quite that same snappy responsiveness, not quite that same jaw-dropping, wow, this pid tomb and this perfect experience. Just like, oh, this is pretty good. Oh, I do see one little place it could be improved. Some of that's probably because the pid tune was not optimized for them. Remember I said that all four of these guys ship from the factory with the exact same pid tune on them. So potentially there's a little bit of room for improvement if you were to work on the tune. But at the end of the day, an additional five or eight grams of weight is going to make a difference. Now, both of these video transmitters have significantly better image quality than the analog one. I think that's pretty much indisputable. But the trade-off is that they have shorter range. In the case of HD0, the shorter range is pretty significant compared to the 450 milliwatt analog video transmitter. In the case of Walk Snail, it's, it's not as significant, but it is shorter range, only 350 milliwatts. But the difference is that you're seeing a higher resolution digital image the whole time. Between the HD0 and the Walk Snail, HD0 is the one that delivers the smoothest experience. And what that means is HD0 has consistent latency with no dropped packets. Just when the signal gets weak, you get those little white sparkles on the screen, but the, the data that gets through is never delayed by the weaker signal. With the Walk Snail system, when the link gets weak, you get sort of stuttering and jittering and dropped packets as well as degraded image quality. And some people especially racers and those who fly proximity freestyle where reaction time is, is at a high premium, some people feel like that means that HD0 or analog has the advantage. In fact, between the analog quad and the HD0 quad, I'm a little hard pressed of which one I would take because HD0 does have better image quality, but analog has more range and analog flies a little bit better. And I'm not sure whether the increased image quality of HD0 would tip me that direction versus the better range and better flight characteristics of analog. I don't know, everybody's gonna make that decision a little bit differently. We should also point out that the Walk Snail Quad is the only one of these that has onboard video recording. So it's got built-in storage and it can store the image coming straight off the camera so there's no degradation as you get further away from yourself or anything like that. It is basically what you see in the goggles, just perfect instead of breaking down as you get further away. Uh, I'm not able to show you that because this little plug that you need to get the footage off the flight controller has changed in this prototype and I don't have the plug that I would need to get it off, but um, I, it's just a recording of what's in the video. It's pretty decent and some people might find that compelling. And the DJI version is surprisingly to some my least favorite out of all of them. It flew okay. It flew shockingly good for something carrying a full DJI Vista air unit. And yet compared to every single other one, it flew worse. It was, it's just too heavy. And I stand by my previous statements that you have to be at least at about the three inch or 95 millimeter size class before carrying a naked Vista starts to really make sense. You can do it and Flywood does it about as well as I suspect you can, but it's still not great. Now, that being said, if I had a DJI system and that was my only video system, and I wanted a nice semi-acrobatic, semi-racing, DJI-capable micro, this would be high on my list. It's one of the best flying two-inch, I haven't flown that many, I should, I should reserve that, but there just aren't that many. It's really good flying and I would be happy with it. But every single time I flew the DJI one, the minute I then flew the analog or any of the others, I was like, oh no, this is so much better. And um, that's a real experience. The place where DJI excels is that it's got a huge amount of range. 1200 milliwatts of output power, you could fly it anywhere you could fly a much larger quad. So for exploration, instead of like racing or flippy flops, then maybe that would make more sense. But if you wanted to do exploration, I think you're going to want something bigger than this anyway, because you're not going to get a lot of flight time out of this tiny little guy, especially because the additional weight of the air unit is killing your battery life. So all that additional range that the air unit gives you is kind of wasted because you gotta come back in and get a new battery anyway. So now let's uh, let's rank these in order of my personal favorites. You may agree or disagree. Um, my 
favorite. That's tough. I think DJI was obviously my least favorite. And analog might have been my favorite. But the crappy camera was really killer. So I think analog is going to go into position two. And we're going to pick either HC0 or Walksnail for position one. And between those two, I feel like Walk Snail will get the edge because it had better range. It has nearly the same flight performance as analog, but better range. Uh, and I personally am not that bothered by the different frame timing. I like the better, the higher resolution image compared to HD zero. So that's going to be my personal order. Walk Snail, number one, analog, number two. AC0 number three and DJI number four. If you decided to pick up one of these quadcopters, please consider clicking one of the affiliate links that's in the video description below this video. Affiliate link means that when you click that link, go to the affiliated store and then make any purchase. You wanna buy one of these, you wanna buy anything, you can click the affiliate links before you make those purchases and then I get a small commission uh, off the purchase. It's just your way of telling the store, hey, Joshua Bardwell sent me. It doesn't cost you anything and it's an easy way Way to support the channel. It sure does mean a lot. Which one of these is your favorite? Huh? Tell me in the comments which one you think is best and why. And if you do end up getting one of these, I have a setup guide. I did a full setup guide for all four of these and I'm going to put it on screen and uh, you can help get, get it in the air and get it flying. Happy flying.